Published in 1962, Silent Spring was a hugely important book that alerted the public to the devastating harm caused by fertilizers and pesticides. In 1960, its author, Rachel Carson, was diagnosed with the cancer that would eventually take her life. Seven months before she died, Carson spent a morning at the coast with her dear friend, Dorothy Freeman, watching the migration of monarch butterflies. That afternoon, she wrote her friend a letter. Please welcome to the stage, Sarah Lancashire. Dear one, this is a postscript to our morning at New Agen. Something I think I can write better than say. For me, it was one of the loveliest of summer's hours and all the details will remain in my memory. That blue September sky, the sounds of the wind in the spruces and surf on the rocks, the gulls busy with their foraging, alighting with deliberate grace, the distant views of Griffith's Head and Todd Point, today so clearly etched they're once half seen in swirling fog. But most of all, I shall remember the monarchs, that unhurried westward drift of one small winged form after another, each drawn by some invisible force. We talked a little about their migration, their life history, did they return? We thought not. For most, at least, this was the closing journey of their lives. But it occurred to me this afternoon, remembering, it was a happy spectacle that we had felt no sadness when we spoke of the fact that there would be no return. And rightly, for when any living thing has come to the end of its life cycle, we accept that end as natural. For the monarch, that cycle is measured in a known span of months. For ourselves, the measure is something else, the span of which we cannot know but the thought is the same. When that intangible cycle has run its course, it is a natural and not unhappy thing that a life comes to an end. That is what those brightly fluttering bits of life taught me this morning. I found a deep happiness in it, and so I hope may you Thank you for this morning, Rachel. In 1934, New York copywriter Robert Pirosh quit his well-paid job and headed for Hollywood, determined to become a screenwriter. When he arrived, he sent the following letter to every executive he could find. It secured him three interviews, one of which led to his job as a junior writer at MGM. Fifteen years later, he won an Oscar for his work on the war film Battleground. Please welcome Sarah Lancashire. <laughs> Dear sir, I like words. I like fat, buttery words, such as ooze, turpitude, glutinous, toady. I like solemn, angular, creaky words, such as straight-laced, cantankerous, pecunious, valedictory. I like spurious, black is white words, such as mortician, liquidate, tonsorial, demimond. I like suave V words such as Sangali, svelte, bravura, verve. 
I like crunchy, brittle, crackly words such as splinter, grapple, jostle, crusty. I like sullen, crabbed, scowling words such as skulk, glower, scabby, churl. I like, oh, heavens, my gracious, landscape words such as tricksy, tucker, genteel, horrid. I like elegant, flowery words such as estivate, peregrinate, elysium, halcyon. I like wormy, squirmy, mealy words such as crawl, blubber, squeal, drip. I like sniggly, chuckling words such as cowlick, gurgle, bubble, burp. <laughs> I like the word screenwriter. <laughs> Better than I like copywriter. So I decided to quit my job in a New York advertising agency and try my luck in Hollywood. But before I take the plunge, I went to Europe for a year of study, contemplation, and horsing around. I have just returned, and I still like words. May I have a few with you? Robert Parrish.